God bless you today, for today is the day the Lord has made. I'll be reading Genesis chapter 4, and as always, we ask God in the mighty name of Jesus to please bless us with the revelation of this word, so we can grow in the knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ and Him crucified, and also we ask that this word will be hid in our hearts. The word of God, the greatest thing on planet earth. We're going to open up the treasure house doors, which is the Bible. We're going to go inside and ask God that we may receive the treasures of them, which is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We need it desperately. All right. Cain and Abel. Here we go. Um, this right here will show you the, I did a video on it showing you the birth of religion. So that's why religion is no good. Oh, it, the religion is of man. So the, it's of the devil. It's no good. And you'll also see the first murder. That's what comes from religion. All right. So that's why in the book of Revelation, the harlot, the harlot with the blood of the saints in her cup spilling over, uh, that is religion. And religion has killed. God only knows the number of millions of people that religion has killed. All right. So. All right. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, is the biblical connotation of the union of husband and wife in respect to the sex act. And she conceived and bore Cain. The first child born to this union would conclude exactly as the Lord said it would with sorrow. And said, I've gotten a man from the Lord by Eve using the title Lord, which means uh, covenant God and which refers to the seed of the woman. She thought Cain was the promised one. She evidently didn't realize that this was impossible for a fallen man to bring forth the promised redeemer. And she again bore his brother Abel. Abel means vanity. Cain being the oldest, this shows that Eve by now had become disillusioned with her firstborn, undoubtedly seeing traits in him which she knew could not be of the promised seed. She was losing faith in God. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Both were honorable professions. And in the process of time, it came to pass. The phrase used here refers to a long, uh, infinite, uh, indefinite period that Cain brought of the fruit, fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Here we go. Here we go. This was probably the first offering that he brought, even though the Lord had explained to the first family the necessity of a sacrificial system, that is, if they were to have any type of communion with God and forgiveness of sins, there, there's evidence that Adam, at least for a while, offered up sacrifices. Cain knew the type of sacrifice that the Lord would accept, but he rebelled against that uh, admo admonitation, demanding that God accept the labor of his hands, which in fact could not, God could not accept. So we have in the persons of Cain and Abel, the first example is a religious man of the world and a genuine man of faith. So there it is, the birth of religion religion the refusal to do things god's way because you want to do things your way with your hands so you can receive the glory so you can say you've done it and now fast forward through all these times why does religion around money power and sex that's why religion is around right now that is religion money power sex and there was the birth of it right there he didn't want to do it god's way he wanted to do it his way. That's that. That's religion for you. So once again, if you belong to a religion, get away from it right now. Leave that religion right now. Ask God to free you from that religion, deliver you from that religion, because religion is man-made of the devil, and Christianity is a personal relationship with Christ. It is not a religion. All right. Four. And Abel, he also brought the first things of his flock, you know, the fat thereof. This is what God demanded. It was a blood sacrifice of an innocent victim, a lamb, which proclaimed the fact that Abel recognized this need of a redeemer and that the one who was coming would be the redeemed lost humanity. The offering of Abel was a type of Christ and the price that he would pay on the cross at Calvary in order for man to be redeemed. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. As stated, this was a type of Christ and the cross and the only offering which God will respect. Abel's altar is beautiful to God's eye and repulsive to man's. Cain's altar is beautiful to man's eye and repulsive to God, God's. Um, these altars exist today. 
around the one that is Christ and his atoning work, few are gathered. Around the other, many, God accepts the slain lamb and rejects the offered fruit, and the offering being rejected, so of necessity is the offerer. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. Let us say it again. God has no respect for any proposed way of salvation other than Jesus Christ and him crucified. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. That which filled Abel with peace filled Cain with wrath. The carnal mind displays his enmity against all this, this truth, which so gladdens and satisfies the heart of the believer. And the Lord said unto Cain, God loves Cain just as he did Abel, and wishes to bless him also. Why are you angry? Abel's altar speaks of repentance of faith and of the precious blood of the Christ, the Lamb of God without blemish. Cain's altar tells of pride, unbelief, self-righteousness, which always elects anger, elicits anger. And why is your countenance fallen? Anger in one form or the other accompanies self-righteousness, for that is what plagued Cain. God's righteousness can only come by the cross, while self-righteousness is dependent on works. If you do well, shall you not be accepted? If you bring the correct sacrifice and thereby place your faith, and if you do not well, sin, a sin offering, lies at the door. A lamb was at the door of the tabernacle, and unto you shall be his desire, and you shall rule over him. And the Lord promised Cain dominion over the earth of that day. If he would only offer up and place his trust in the right sacrifice, he promises the same presently to all who trust Christ. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed them. The first murder, Cain's religion, was too refined to kill a lamb, but not too cultured to murder his brother. God's way of salvation fills the heart with love. Man's way of salvation inflames it with hatred. Religion has never been has ever been the greatest cause of bloodshed. There it is right there. As I did a video on this, my, my birth of religion video, he couldn't kill a lamb. No, couldn't do that. That was too much. It was too much to kill a lamb. But to kill his own brother, no problem. Who does that remind you of today? Who does that remind you of? We have untold millions of people who would kill all the humans on planet earth before they would sacrifice the lamb to God that is what you get so once again if you belong in a religion you need to get away immediately get away immediately and the Lord said unto Cain where is Abel your brother Adam sins against God and Cain sins against man in their united conduct, we have sin in all its forms, and that on the first page of human history. Isn't that something? <laughs> I, I, I tell you, man, that this this is what we have. Immediately, Adam and Eve fall to sin, and this is the result of sin. You see how that's that's why I tell you, God does not accept sin. He hates sin. He will not accept sin. And sin ruins everything. And he said, "No, not I am my." Uh, and he said, "I know not. Am I my brother? Am I my brother's keeper?" He showed himself a liar and saying, "I know not." Wicked and profane, and thinking he could hide his sin from God, unjust in denying himself to be his brother's keeper, obstinate and desperate is is and not confessing his sin. And he, God said, "What you have done." This concerns man's sin, the fruit of a sinful nature. The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. There is some scriptural evidence that Cain cut his brother's throat. Thus, the first shedding of human blood, that ominous thought, sprang, that thought sprang up, divinely bestowed, that the earth will grant no peace to the one who has wantonly uh, uh, stained her face with a life stream, life stream of man. And now you are cursed from the earth. Cain reputed the cross, murdered his brother, and now is cursed by God. This is the first curse leveled by God against a human being, which has opened her mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. It was the beginning of which 
of what has proven to be saturation from then until now. The earth has been soaked with the blood of innocent victims. When you till the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto you her strength. For since the fact that Cain had polluted man's habitation, and now when he tilled the soil, it will resist him as an enemy. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be in the earth. Presents to search not a better lot, but under the compulsion of an evil conscience. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Cain did not see the enormity of his sin, but the severity of his punishment. In other words, there was no repentance. So there it is. It's the punishment he had a problem with. Not that he murdered his brother. So I'll say to you, if it's your punishment, your chastising from if it, if it's the chastising from God you have a problem with, but it's not but your sin you don't, you're just you're being just like Cain. You're being just like Cain. We're always remember. We get what we get because of our sin. Understand that. All right, so, and Cain said, okay, and 14, Behold, you have driven me out of this day from the face of the earth. Adam's sin brought expulsion from the inner circle, Cain's from the outer. And from your face shall I be hid. To be hidden from the face of God is to be not regarded by God and not protected by his guardian care. And it shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, a wanderer. And it shall come to pass that everyone who finds me shall seek to kill me. The reference by Cain to other individuals proves that he and some that he that in some 100 plus years since Adam and Eve were created, the first parents had other children. By this time, there could very well have been several thousands of people on earth that no doubt were. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whoever whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken upon him sevenfold. Cain was allowed to live in order that he might be a perpetual perpetual warning to others that the blood of their fellow man must not be spilled. However, very few heeded as we present as at as few presently heed. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. We aren't told what the mark was, but evidently all knew. So the punishment for this for this for this devil here, just to be a vagabond, fugitive, have everyone want to kill you, just roaming the earth. That, you know what? That's what he deserved, isn't it? Um, if he had repented, if he had repented, if he had fell to his face and said, Oh, God, you know all things. I have killed my brother. Oh, God, forgive me. And if he had meant it, if he was sincere, God could have, God would have forgave him and he could have been given the right sacrifice and God would have dealt with him accordingly. But instead, he didn't do that. And this is what he gets. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. Those in rebellion against God do not all desire his presence and for all obvious reasons. And dwelt in the land of Nod in the east of Eden. Nod means wandering. The majority of the human race wander because they don't know God and therefore have no peace. And Cain knew his wife, biblical terminology for conception, that she conceived and bore Enoch. And he built a city. Actually means was building or began to build. The idea is... It was not finished, and so it has been and is with the human race. Nothing is ever quite finished with the unredeemed, simply because what is built doesn't suffice. And they call the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Carries the idea to the meaning of the name Enoch that this city would be a place of education and learning, but it was education and learning without God. And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begot fathered, uh, you see the names, uh, Methuselah, <laughs> he begot Methuselah. Um, all this was 300 or more years after the creation of Adam and Eve. And Lamech uh, took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the other name of her Zillah. Uh, for the first instance of polygamy recorded in the Bible. And uh, Ada bore Jabal. He was the father of such dwelling tents and of such have cattle. And his brother's name was Jabal, and he was the father of all such as Hanel the harp in Oregon. Seems that Jabal was the originator of musical instruments. Man's ear is now filled with other sounds than those which issue from Calvary, and his eyes is filled with other objects than the crucified Christ. So let's go back to this man having two wives. 
Um, it should be obvious, but the earth had to be populated. And so when you have to populate the earth, you may just find yourself having to have more than one wife because the earth must be populated. Remember, you just started off with Adam and Eve. And so the earth had to be populated, right? Now, fast forward to modern times, of course. Um, the earth doesn't need to be populated anymore like that. So um, that, that you can't do that anymore. That would be a sin. God's against that, all right? Um, <clears throat> and Zillow swore uh, to Baal Cain, an instructor of every uh, artificer in brass and iron, and her sister of Tubala Cain was Nama. Uh, Tubala Cain was the first one to begin work with metals. The name of Cain was probably added to show that these were Cainites, uh, Nama, which means beautiful. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and seventyfold. This is the first recorded poem in human history, like so much poetry ever since, it glorifies immorality and murder and denies coming wrath. Man has attempted to deny judgment ever since. Nevertheless, judgment one day is coming. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. They were dealing with Cain's line in the beginning of corruption and violence. Moses goes back some years to the birth of Seth. The Holy Spirit will single out Seth because he was the lineage of Christ. The name Seth means appointed substitute. For God said, she has appointed me another seed instead of Abel, who, whom Cain killed. When Cain was born, he said, I've gotten a man from the Lord, indicating that she believed in the covenant. Now she uses the term God in effect, stating that she has lost faith in the covenant. As stated, this seed would be the one through whom Christ would come. But because of faithlessness, Eve did not know or believe this. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. The name Enos means sickly, mortal, decaying man. The awful results of the fall are now beginning to sink in. Then began men to call upon the end, the name of the Lord. Probably refers to contempt, quite possibly the family of Cain, knowing that Seth had now taken the place of Abel, as it regards the firstborn or appointed one, uh, contemptuously refers to them as the God people or the Lord people. So that's chapter four of Genesis. We see the birth of religion, what religion does, it murders. Um, we see unrepentance. We see no what no faith results in. So basically, we see the results of you not having faith, you murdering, you being in, in a religion, um, and so on and so on. So uh, the word of God, what a blessing it is, and we see we see how people can be. So as always. We always need to turn to God quickly, no matter what. We need to run to his mercy and grace and ask for forgiveness, and we will be forgiven for, for, for our sins. So, well, um, God bless you.